Hello, my name is Jordan Lyles, and this video is all about going in-depth into the before and after photo comparisons in my short film, New York, Then and Now, a tribute to George Bradford Bernard. I recommend watching the film before watching this behind-the-scenes video. I also created a shortened trailer-style version called 140 Years of Change in New York that was released in April 2014. The Brooklyn Museum and Brooklyn Public Library's Brooklyn Collection believes that all of George Bradford Bernard's surviving 19th century photographs were captured between 1872 and his death in 1887. I shot all of the present day images in this video between July 2013 and April 2014. The first photo shows a view of a Brooklyn street. Trolleys once turned down Hanover Place, the street that's off camera to the left. Today, that's the route some city buses take. The camera is positioned just west of the Fulton and Flatbush intersection in Brooklyn, and the camera is looking west. This photo comparison was one of the most difficult ones to shoot. Even though you don't see cars in the present day photo, this is a very busy street for both cars and city buses. I would only be able to have my camera set up for a few seconds, then I'd have to get out of the way. I'd lose my place at trying to get the perfect angle, and you know, lining up the angles of curbs and having the street be perfectly leveled in the distance was no easy task. I returned to the spot several times on my bicycle, and this was the best I could manage. Note the second floor of the buildings on the right in the present day photo. Some of these existed more than a century ago. There's also a brick building that's off camera to the right that's now empty. It's also very old. Also, as a bonus, there's a small alley called Grove Place that's within a minute walking distance. It's one of the few accessible dead-end alleys left in the city. Moving on to the second photo, this one was shot on Clinton and Baltic, somewhat near Brooklyn's Borough Hall. I dealt with some traffic to get this one too, moving out of the way when cars were coming. George Bernard looks to have shot this one using one of his detective cameras. He created his own hidden cameras, disguised as a suitcase or perhaps a book. This allowed him to capture life without the subjects realizing they're being photographed. Several other photographs in this video are also shot this way, as you will notice. Note the man off to the very left of the photograph holding the small container. Also, there are what looks to be two women on the right side walking down the street. A few other things to note are the church steeple, the foreground shadows, the barrels in front of homes, and awnings above some of the windows. I returned to shoot this one in the winter since you really aren't able to see much of the buildings with so many leaves in the spring, summer, and fall. This third photo was flipped horizontally when I first found it on the Brooklyn Museum website. I didn't have a church name or an address, so I spent several hours looking through Google Street View, and I finally found a match. Most of the changes are obvious when you view the video, though my favorite part of the old one is the house to the left of the church that's no longer there. My guess is that it may have served as the church leader's house. I shot this one on a Sunday morning, and I had more than a few people eyeing me I was able to speak with a few of them and let them know what I was doing. For the fourth photo showing the man shoveling snow and the present day one that I shot with the woman walking her dog, this is near Clinton and Kane. I wasn't able to definitively find out if this is the same location, though in doing hours of research on this one, I believe this to be my best guess. The man with the mustache on the right is holding a bundle of papers, perhaps. There's a beautiful church steeple in the background, and a man with a top hat's walking with at least two others in the distance. Notice that Bernard, the photographer, captured his photo just as the shoveler began to toss aside some snow. Also note that the people in this shot are in motion, so he was able to instantaneously capture a photograph with minimal blurriness using some of his own inventions. The Brooklyn Daily Eagle regarded him as the father of instantaneous photography, so it's no surprise. For the fifth photo showing people skating on the ice, and in present day the man fishing in front of the Lowell Water Bridge, this is in Brooklyn's Prospect Park. The bridge today says 1889, 
So the one you see in Bernard's photo from the 19th century was the previous bridge. It's difficult to see, but you can tell that there are quite a large number of people standing on the bridge watching the ice skaters. And off to the right, you might have noticed a child with his arms out to each side trying to keep balanced on the ice. Here's a bonus before and after comparison of two present day seasons at the Prospect Park Boathouse. And now the sixth photo shows Bow Bridge and Central Park. There used to be more land to walk on over to the right hand side of the photo, but that's changed over time. One of the most interesting parts of this photo is that you have waterfowl in the same spot no matter the century. In the seventh photo, you can see part of Prospect Park that was recently reopened after the construction of an outdoor ice skating rink. Note the fence in the present day photo, which should now be gone. Lincoln statue is now just off camera to the left. It was originally placed in Grand Army Plaza. It's now here in the Concert Grove. Note that the Concert Grove is on the east side of the park, and it's not the same place where bands perform concerts today. That's on the west side. For photo number eight with the men marching from right to left, this spot wasn't easy to find. The description for the photo on the Brooklyn Museum website says that men are taking a prisoner somewhere, though we aren't sure who or where. Notice their long shadows in the morning light. I knew that photographer Bernard had shot many photos around the Borough Hall area of Brooklyn. So in looking at the side of the building, I realized that he shot this photo on the east side, pointing north. The way I recognize which side is by studying the buildings in the background on the right side of his photo. That row of buildings seen in the background is now completely gone. And today there is some grass and stone in its place, plus a larger building further back from the street. I'll have more on this specific location coming up in future photos. Photo 9 shows a Chase Bank building today, but it used to be Frank Bollinger's Meat Market. The address is 883 Flatbush Avenue. Notice today the green and yellow pawn shop sign and how it's a small part of the back of the building. Now look at Bernard's photo and you can see the small shop, that same plot of land, was once a tobacco store. It appears that that small plot of land has been used for small shops for more than 100 years. Also note in the old photo, there's a church steeple on the right in the far distance. For photo 10, this is just a few steps away from photo number 8 that showed men taking a prisoner somewhere. Bernard and I stood on the steps to capture our photos. This might have been one of the most confusing shots to shoot, but bear with me. There's a fountain in the middle of the shot that seems to have moved a few feet east between the 19th century and today. If you click this link, which is a YouTube annotation, make sure that those are on, you can see the fountain perhaps wasn't always centered with the building behind it. The row of buildings on the right are the ones that were in the background of the taking prisoners photograph. That row of buildings, again, is completely gone today. It's been replaced by the row of trees and the larger building behind that. The two streets in the distance, one in the middle of the shot and one just to the left, line up with my new photo. On the building in the distance, the word daily may have been for the Brooklyn Daily Eagle newspaper, which was a phenomenal resource in the research that I did for this project. I shot my photo when it snowed and I did this to match the conditions when Bernard shot his photograph. With all comparisons, I wanted to make sure to match up all conditions as best as possible. One very interesting thing to note is between the time Bernard shot his photograph and I shot mine, an above ground train was constructed, it operated, and it was demolished. And again, if you have YouTube annotations on, you can click the link that I have displayed so you can see what it once looked like. Photo 11 shows Flatbush Town Hall at 35 Snyder Avenue. We aren't sure who the two men are in the middle of the photo, but they are looking at George Bernard. Similarly, when I was taking my photo, I saw someone staring at me as well. A woman in a minivan who was parked on the side of the road was kind of giving me some dirty looks, but I was able to get my photo and get out of there before she had a chance to say anything to me. Have a look at the very top of the steeple and notice that part of it is gone missing. And a flagpole has been removed and there has been some work done on a chimney since the 19th century as well. 
Photo number 12 is a great one showing that George Bernard was able to watch as the Brooklyn Bridge was constructed over time, just as I was able to see the new One World Trade Center tower go up during my five years in New York. As you can see, Brooklyn Bridge Park didn't exist in its current form in the 19th century. Note the old ships in the photo as we will see them again coming up in another photo or two. So after the shot of the Brooklyn Bridge fades to black, we see photo number 13. In my photo of present day, a mother and child are walking down the street. Notice the boarded up building on the right and the top of the old building above the trees in the middle background. As we dissolve to the 19th century, a few things are clear. Trolleys, including the one that says Greenwood, which is a beautiful cemetery we'll see in an upcoming photo. A building that says Bowls, Portraits, and Photography, and one in the background that says the Japanese store are all visible. The sign for the Japanese store is how I found out where this is, thanks to an old ad in the Brooklyn Daily Eagle archives, which are available online for free. The camera points toward the intersection of Fulton and Duffield. The man off to the left is said to be a fisherman according to the photo description. Some shadows are long here, letting us know it's likely early morning or late afternoon. Photo 14 would not have been easy to find had it not been for all the research I had been doing on all of Bernard's work. From my time studying his photographs, I knew that he liked to shoot around Brooklyn's Borough Hall. Those bright windows in the background are Borough Hall. In Bernard's 19th century photo, the man is shoveling coal into a bucket, and everyone is bundled up, so it might be winter. As you can see by the long shadows, this is also early morning or late afternoon. One of the shadows shows Bernard with his hat on. It's one of the few glimpses we get of his shadow in his photography. I wonder if he would return after shooting, develop his photo, and see his shadow. Uh, you know, would he be okay with it? Would he think of it as a mistake? Oh, there's my shadow, I didn't see that. Today I know I enjoy seeing it, and I considered naming the project Photographer in the Shadows or something similarly cool before I was able to find three photos of him. Photo 15 is one I did not include originally when I released a short video and several images in April 2014. The location of his photo is very near Grand Army Plaza. George Bernard's job for several years of his life was as a deputy purveyor, civil engineer, surveyor. There are a few terms I found in a few old books. He wrote a book called, and this title's long so prepare, The Waterworks of Brooklyn, a historical and descriptive account of the construction of the works and the quantity, quality, and cost of the supply. Probably not the most exciting book, but it was likely a good resource for people at the time. I visited the New York Public Library main branch to research the book, and I'll tell you, it was an adventure unto itself giving the librarian the locating information for the specific book. They sent the number down many floors underground where someone retrieved it from a massive vault, and it was sent up the mechanical elevator and delivered to the librarian who delivered it to me. As you can see, it was not in good condition. It didn't contain information about his life, but it did give insight into the fact that he was very much involved in the beginning of creating water pipe infrastructure for Brooklyn. This building in Bernard's photograph is now gone. There also was once a water tower within Prospect Park, but it's now gone as well. Today, this hill is called Mount Prospect Park. In photo 16, this is public school number one in Brooklyn. Today it's crumbling, though it does have landmark status. The location is 2274 Church Avenue. Notice a small tower off to the left that served as a bell for school children. And to the right, it appears that was once a street. It's now blocked off and partially taken up by a building. The way that I found this one was interesting. In riding around the city on my bicycle and gathering other test shots and photos for the project, I snapped a few photos of a crumbling school. When I returned home, I looked on the Brooklyn Museum website and I found that George Bernard shot a photo of the building. It was one of those really cool wow moments during the creation of this project. Photo number 17 is just out to the side of Borough Hall, 
close to the spot for the taking prisoners photo and the one I shot on the steps of the building with the fountain in the middle. In the present day photo, the street that was once traveled by horse-drawn trolleys is today a pedestrian promenade. Trees to the center left of my photo were once where buildings stood. And the big building to the right that you see in the present day photo wasn't around in Bernard's days. Also notice that the Brooklyn Daily Eagle newspaper sign is different in this one. It says, Oyster Dining, and a few other words. The old trolley in the middle of the photo says Prospect Park and Flatbush. There are several other words in these photos that I can't quite read, but maybe some of you can figure out a few of the words. Photo number 18 is one I've used as the main comparison for this project. It's beautiful composition in Central Park by George Bernard. It shows the iconic Bethesda fountain. In striving for perfection in this project, I did shoot my photo at the same time of day that Bernard shot his, showing long shadows in sunset. You can help fund my future photography projects by visiting jordanlyles.com and purchasing a print of the Central Park transformation. Photo number 19. If you've been watching this entire video, you know by now that I mentioned George Bernard liked to concentrate many of his photos around Brooklyn's Borough Hall. This shows a view from behind the building along Giralamon Street. That's Bryant and Stratton College in the background in the middle. They have a website, but they don't still have the same location. That building is now gone. Off to the left is a bookbinding company sign, and this photo looks to have possibly been shot in the morning from what we can tell about the shadows. I believe the kids are playing a game in the back of this cart, according to a description on the Brooklyn Museum website. Photo number 20 was an adventure to capture. In looking at Bernard's photo, I knew it was a view from a cemetery likely in Brooklyn, but I didn't know anything about Greenwood Cemetery at the time. In the several Sunday afternoons when I bicycled over to the cemetery, it's now one of my fondest memories from living in New York. The grounds are around the same size as all of Prospect Park, and the landscaping is breathtaking. Greenwood Cemetery was and still is the place to be buried in New York. Samuel Morse has a really grand monument in the cemetery. He, of course, developed Morse code. That's just one example of some of the historical figures who are buried there. I locked my bike and walked through the historic entrance. In walking around the grounds looking for the highest view, I was able to find the location. Just for a moment, I put my equipment on the ground, looked out, and I wanted to enjoy the same view that he enjoyed. But I was disappointed. It was summertime, I believe, so there were leaves all over the trees and you couldn't see out to the water. So I returned in the winter to get the clearest possible conditions, and this was the result. And looking at Bernard's photo, you can see that the three high points of the entrance are off to the left. And there are some ships in the far distance, which is one of the coolest parts of this photo. In the photo in present day, a tree is growing on the left. And here's a bonus view of New York, just a few steps from where Bernard shot his photograph. I highly encourage people who live in the city or people coming to visit New York to take an afternoon to walk the grounds of Greenwood. It's the most beautiful place in the entire city, and the entire time you're surrounded by grand monuments and amazing history. Visit the cemetery website to watch a promotional video with actor John Torturo. Manhattan's Canal Street is shown in photo 21. I used two clues to match this one up. I noticed a curve in the road in Bernard's photograph. I zoomed in on his image a bit to match with the photo I captured. Have a look at the tall, dark building on the right-hand side. It still stands today and is one of the clues I used to match the photos together. Canal Street used to be a canal in the early 19th century, though it was covered and completed as a street around the same time. Photo 22 shows a man walking up a street in Brooklyn with the Brooklyn Bridge behind him. This is on Columbia Heights, also known as Everett Street. Today a building blocks most of the view of the bridge it's sunset in Bernard's photo since the man's shadow and shadows of buildings are falling off to the right. Manhattan is off to the left, out of view. Photo 23 is a bonus, just like photo 15, that showed the water building and hill at Mount Prospect Park. I didn't include this one in the original batch in April 2014. 
Finding this location was another adventure. I knew it was likely Prospect Park, but getting up high enough to take the photo was going to prove difficult. I wasn't going to be able to walk into Brooklyn Public Library and ask for roof access, so I needed to get crafty. I walked up to Mount Prospect Park, looked around, didn't really see a way to take the same photo. Then I noticed a piece of fence had been knocked down, so I walked right over that fence that had been knocked down. I walked in more than two feet of snow, and I got to the correct place right behind the library. In Bernard's photo, the area that would become Grand Army Plaza is off camera to the right, so we're looking west. I snapped this photo in winter since leaves would almost completely cover the view at any other time of year. The main focal point when you see the transition from new to old is the middle curve in the street path in the park. Here's a photo of something I found up in this dead end area. I get the feeling someone may have been sleeping here a few times in the past. Photo 24 shows New York City Hall. The towering Manhattan Municipal Building wasn't built until between 1907 and 1914, so it doesn't appear behind City Hall in George Bernard's photograph. The very right side, Barclay Vesse Building, also doesn't appear in the old photo, as it wasn't constructed until 1923. Today, that's known as the Verizon Building. Capturing my photo was likely much more difficult than Bernard in terms of getting access. I asked several security officers if I could step inside to take a photo for a before-after comparison, and they were nice and let me step inside just enough time to get what I needed. Photo 25. Just as George Bernard was able to watch the Brooklyn Bridge rise, I was able to see one World Trade Center rise. They're both pictured here in my photo. I'm speculating, but with all the sailors on all the ships, plus people on the street, I believe this to be possibly the opening of the Brooklyn Bridge on May 24th, 1883. There appears to be a large celebration happening in the photograph, and George Brenard died in 1887. It's not definite, but it is likely that this is one of the few photographs that captures the grand opening of the bridge. Here's a bonus photo of a sign just down the street. Cameras weren't exactly around in the 1600s, but it's fairly rare to see a place in the country that's this historic. Photo 26 shows a small waterfall in Prospect Park. It's not Benin Falls. In fact, here's a present day season to season change of Benin Falls that I shot in 2013 and 2014. The waterfall that George Brenard shot is a bit different. I believe it's near the large music pagoda. If you look closely, you can see a bridge in the background of Brenard's photograph. The bridge is known as Nethermead Arch, and it was recently restored as part of the Prospect Park Alliance's comprehensive restoration project. If you want to visit the small waterfall, the coordinates to put into Google Maps are on the screen. I was only able to locate this small waterfall by visiting and exploring the park on my own time, and by finding out more about the bridge that I eventually read to be the Nethermead Arch. In photo 27, this is the same location in Central Park, the Bethesda Fountain area, as photo 18, and it was likely captured on the same afternoon. I believe this to be true because of the shadow similarity. It's near sunset, just like in photo 18. Notice that you're unable to see any towering buildings in the late 19th century from inside Central Park. For example, the world's first 10-story building was built between 1884 and 1885 in Chicago. The tallest building in New York City from 1854 to 1890 was Trinity Church at 79 Broadway. So that kind of gives an idea that before George Brenard passed away in 1887, the area's parks really were a true breathing space for the city. And photo 28 shows the area that we know now as Grand Army Plaza in Brooklyn. Bernard actually shot his photograph from the opposite side. I took the liberty of mirroring his image for the purpose of my video and made sure to note this fact on my website. You can view the original photograph on the Brooklyn Museum website. Here you can see several church steeples in the distance, and if you look close enough, 
That's the Brooklyn Bridge. We're not sure if it's before or after 1883, whenever the bridge opened, but that is the bridge in the background. It may be under construction at the time George Bernard shot his photograph. When I first saw this photo, I thought it would be too difficult to reshoot from such a high angle. How did I do it? Well, I'll keep this one a secret. I'll give some hints. I'll say that I wasn't on a rooftop, nor was I standing on a hill. I also wasn't flying a toy helicopter or drone to get this photo, and I didn't hold a long pole high in the sky. Let's call it magic. I was fairly surprised when I arrived and realized that I would be able to take my photo with relative ease. After the before and after photos in my short film, you get to see three photos of George Bernard. The first shows him enjoying lunch on the shores of Great Neck in Long Island. The second shows him in his elaborate study. And the third shows him on the steps of a building with friends. In this third photo, there appears to be a piece of his equipment right next to him. We aren't sure who's taking the photo, but in all of my research, I believe that he is the man on the right-hand side. I extend my thanks to Julie C. Moffat and the Brooklyn Public Library for the first two photos and the Brooklyn Museum for the third one. And now you see several additional still photos. The first photo shows four men in the register's office in City Hall, shot in 1875. It's unique in that it was taken indoors by means of artificial light. This was not a common practice in the 1870s, and it shows his early interest in technical experimentation. I'm not sure who the man is with the small case next to the elephants, but it could be one of his friends with a hidden camera. The third photo here shows a family enjoying the beach on a nice day. The wide monster of a building after it is one of the first post office buildings in New York. Today, that's where City Hall Park resides. A man is selling grapes in the next photo, and I like the depth of field with the focus on the foreground. And finally, one photo I'd love to have a before and after comparison of, but I wasn't about to climb to the top of the Brooklyn Bridge to get up there. I cleaned up some damage to this photo, so for artistic purposes, please visit the Brooklyn Museum website to look at the original. The photo shows Brooklyn, and you can see on the left side the American Sugar Refining Company, better known as the Domino Sugar Refinery. The final photo is one of George Bernard, shot in a portrait studio. I thank the Theta Psi fraternity, one that Bernard helped found for access to the photo. This project was made in the memory of George Bradford Bernard, a pioneer in the field of photography. I decided to go with before and after photography to draw interest to the subject. I hope all of you enjoy his work and my project and dedication to him. You can subscribe to me here on YouTube you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Jordan Lyles Photography, on Twitter at tree in 303 on Instagram, the username Jordan Lyles, and visit jordanlyles.com for more on this project and to watch my other films, including three exploration films titled The Abandoned Resort in Cayman Brack, Tennessee Wonderland, and Tennessee Mountain View. I encourage everyone to explore George Bradford Bernard's entire photography collection online.